What's going on everybody? C4 here. Quick video out here tonight just because I was actually going to push the replacements debut players a day ahead except the video isn't it you know it felt rushed and I know that if I just have a little bit more time I can make it where I want it to be for tomorrow's video which is going to be the replacements where we meet all of the players that are going to be playing on the defensive and special team side. So I figure what better time than tonight just to sit back and talk to you and give you my preview, my thoughts on how the playoffs has gone. But ultimately, this big time matchup on Sunday night between my Philadelphia Eagles and the New Orleans Saints. Because pretty much everything I said in the Eagles-Bears game, minus the double doink from the Cody Parkey field goal, happened. And the Philadelphia Eagles won. I look like a genius. I went 3-1 and one in my four predictions because obviously I was always going to pick against Dallas. Even though in reality I did think that game was going to be closer than what I may have said. But, you know, at the end of the day, fuck Dallas. Never going to pick Dallas ever. So 3-1 uh, and one's not bad. And now we're going into the home stretch where uh, my predictions were give me the Kansas City Chiefs in a very close one. And you know what? The, the whole... The Kansas City Chiefs, every time they play a big-time opponent, they they fall flat. That could very much ring true against the Colts. I am all in on the Colts. I'm very excited to see where they go in the future. I love almost all the players. Literally, it was like the Colts went off my draft sheet, in minus my son Darius Leonard, because I wasn't going to be over-biased with my adopted son. So I, I really do like the Colts, and if the Colts upset the Chiefs in that one awesome but ultimately i just think when i look at any matchup in the afc maybe it's clouded maybe it's clouding my judgment i just look at what of the teams has the best chance of beating the new england patriots and i just think out of all the teams that are left is the chiefs so that's why i'm backing the chiefs then also we have the patriots and the chargers and that one give me the patriots unfortunately i mean i'm just i'm not buying what philip rivers is has been selling down the stretch he started the season incredibly hot but in my opinion, you know, you could be a Charger fan and have a disagreeing opinion. Phillip Rivers has not played well down the home stretch here. He has not looked really overly impressive, especially the last couple weeks. So you got to do better than that to go into Foxborough and to beat New England. Obviously, with the heartbreaking story about Brandon Meebane, the defensive tackle who lost his uh, infant daughter. Uh, I think she had like some heart problems and stuff like that. Man, that is god awful. So I am all in on cheering for the Chargers. I just, I don't know, man. I just, I just. They can win. They absolutely can win. This is not the same Patriots defense that was really, really good. This is a Patriots defense that got exposed by the Eagles last year. But all, all, all signs point towards New England being the favorites and the Chargers having to have a mistake-free game to beat the New England Patriots versus the Patriots that they probably could have a couple mistakes and they still should probably win. So just to get to the point, I'm taking New England and the Chiefs. Even though, literally, I am pulling so much more for the Chargers. And really, for a personal standpoint, it's a toss-up between the Colts and the Chiefs. So then we look at the NFC, and we have the other game. The Dallas Cowboys against the Rams. Clearly, I don't even need to do a deep dive in here. I'm going with the Rams. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys. I, I personally feel like Dak's going to struggle against the Rams' defense. But I could definitely see that Dallas Cowboy defense causing problems for Jared Goff because, you know, kind of like Phillip Rivers, Jared Goff did not finish out the season particularly well. Both those guys kind of like eliminate themselves from the MVP race with their play, in my opinion. So while I am clearly pulling for the Rams, and I do as much as literally all my hate for the Rams comes from Sean McVay robbing Doug Peterson for Coach of the Year last year, I still like a lot of players. I've always been a big fan of Marcus Peters. I like Ndamukong and Sue, Aaron Donald. How can't you like him? I like Todd Gurley. You know, so it's one of those things where I'm, you know, it's not hard for me. It's like, oh, they're going against, I'm not, it's not like one of those scenarios where I'm just picking the other team because they're going against the Cowboys. I like watching the Rams play. So give me the Rams in that one. And then obviously we have the Philadelphia Eagles against the Saints. I'm not going to make an official bet because I don't, I don't, everyone knows I'm going to take Philly and everyone knows that would be a huge, huge upset for the Eagles to win. Everyone knows that's probably, I don't want to say unlikely, but, you know, I would not bet the house that the Philadelphia Eagles are going to win this matchup just because we saw it happen later on in the year. But it is a different Philadelphia Eagles team, and that is where it's going to be the meat and potatoes of this video. It's kind of how is Philly going to beat the New Orleans Saints? Well, one thing is that I think someone showed, it was um, one of the Eagles beat reporters, that teams that rest their starters when they have the first round by, that they are four and six in the last 10 seasons. So, I mean, Philly did it last year and they went on to win the Super Bowl. I actually think one of the teams that was in that four and six was the Saints when they won to win the Super Bowl. But at least when you're talking about the Saints, it's completely different teams. What we do know is that teams that rest their starters aren't even above 500 for a win loss. So it is a definite talking point when you have to look at this team. I mean, Drew Brees, 
again, we, we kind of talked about um, Philip Rivers. We kind of talked about Jared Goff. Drew Brees was not, you know, anything special in like the last month of the season. Obviously, he didn't play that last game, and he's not playing bad, but I think most people did, you know, ever since that Dallas Cowboy game, start to be simmer off on Drew Brees being their MVP because it was, it was really a two-horse race between Patty Mahomes and Drew Brees. So the fact that Drew Brees has that rest, extra, you know, four quarters of not throwing the football, of not having that chemistry, not having that rhythm with his teammates, it's it's something that could go in the Philadelphia Eagles' favor. But when I look at this more so from the players that are going to be on the field, obviously, you know, we can't put a measurable anything on the magic of Nick Foles. I, I, Nick Foles could just be Nick Foles. This could be the Nick Foles that played Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, and hell yeah, we would probably beat the New Orleans Saints. But what we do know about Nick Foles is that he's still playing pretty well. He had a couple hiccups last week. I almost, I think I said in exact word for word in my preview that Nick Foles will have an interception early and he's going to get it out of the way and he's going to play a lot better. Well, I didn't count on there being two interceptions early, but after those picks, Nick Foles was absolutely lights out, especially when he needed to at the very end of the game to drive down the field and get that touchdown to Golden Tate. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Nick Foles is better than Drew Brees. Not true. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I would rather Nick Foles than Drew Brees. Not true. Both these guys have had success in the playoffs. But what I am going to tell you with full confidence is Nick Foles is the hotter quarterback of the two. And I think that kind of puts them slightly on a more even playing field. So that is the quarterbacks. When you look at the run game, uh, obviously the Saints are going to have a much better run game with Alvin Kamara at the backfield. Those running backs, those style of running backs historically have caused some issues. Not so much worried about Mark Ingram, guys that run between the tackles. Philly is usually ready to stop those guys. But Alvin Kamara can be a monster. And then obviously we saw what happened last time. Our secondary against the Saints when they dropped the 40 bomb on us was nothing like it is today. Uh, I'm not going to come out and say that, oh my god, man, our secondary is playing like one of the best secondaries in football. Not true, but our secondary is playing significantly better than the secondary we put out there against the Saints the first time around. We have Rasul Douglas, who's playing very, very well, and I honestly think Rasul Douglas, not a terrible matchup against Michael Thomas. Two big physical wide receivers, I, I think he's going to be up to the challenge. We got Avante Maddox, who had was in the first half against the Bears, looked elite. I think Pro Football Focus gave him the highest rookie cornerback grade in the NFL over Denzel Ward, Baldinger, uh, Baldy reviews or Baldy breakdowns on Twitter says that, well, I'm not going to go that far, but he's like, Avante Maddox's tape looks better than Denzel Ward's tape. And while Avante Maddox has been outstanding and the biggest pleasant surprise from the draft class, we also saw in the second half, he is uber aggressive. That's what makes him so good because he's undersized. So he has to rely on that aggressiveness to make up for the size difference because really he's built like a nickel corner. He's like five... We'll say 5'9", five, 5'10", five, and he's playing on the outside. So he has to be aggressive because straight up and jump balls and stuff like that, he's not going to win. And we saw in the second half, the Chicago Bears and Allen Robinson were able to make a couple big-time plays against Avante Maddox. But ultimately, that Avante Maddox was not playing like the one that we saw when he got stomped. I don't even think – I think he played limited. I think he played free third safety in that game. So, again <laughs> – we don't have our full strength secondary. It looks like Sidney Jones might make a return, which will be nice to have that depth. I don't think he surplants anyone because even in the nickel, Craven LeBlanc, he has played very, very well. He had that huge play against the Chicago Bears that was it a fumble, was it not a fumble, which everyone, you know, once they showed the rules because there was no clear recovery and the ref blew the play dead, it was had to be, even though it was a catch fumble, ultimately had to rely on it being an incomplete pass. Craven LeBlanc has played very, very well. So from that standpoint, I don't think Sidney Jones walks back into this team, but having that depth is nice because throughout the season, we have seen our cornerbacks drop like flies. And hey, maybe, maybe, just maybe, if if they're ballsy enough, you might you might take uh, Avante Maddox, put him at safety, get rid of Corey Graham, who without a doubt is the biggest glaring weakness on this defense. Put Maddox back there at safety with Malcolm Jenkins, and then have Sidney Jones and Rizul Douglas on the outside with Craven LeBlanc in the nickel. Wouldn't hate that just from maybe we won't get the most out of Avante Maddox moving him from corner to safety, but we get Corey Graham's ass off the field. And Corey Graham is a nice depth piece. He's already on special teams, but he has dr drastically looked exposed this year, whereas last year where he was used sparingly, he was, you know, he's a good, nice little role player. So from that standpoint, I don't think that we're going to get blown out, even though my confidence is an all-time high for us to win this. Uh, it, it's it's going to be tough, man. It's going to be tough. And... Um, I mean, our defense, I think I think the the front seven 
Fletcher Cox is, is, is booming right now. I think our offensive line is a lot better, significantly better. I think that the, uh, you know, the, the, the Saints got a really good run defense, but we're not running the ball anyways. It's not part of our game plan, so it's, you know, it kind of mitigates that a little bit. It's not like Nick Foles needs the run game to get things going. He's just been able to just keep throwing it, keep throwing it, throw it on third downs, gutsy play calls. You get Alshon Jeffrey coming up with big plays. Dallas Goddard's getting more and more involved in the offense. And hey, maybe, just maybe, that third round pick for Golden Tate is going to start to pay dividends after that chemistry that we saw last week against the Chicago Bears. So, you know, I'm going to be picking the Eagles in this one. I'm always going to back my team. And while I'm nowhere near as confident as I was last week against the Bears, I was taking the Eagles every day of the week last week against the Bears. And obviously, we got by by the, uh, you know, the hair on our chinny chin chins in that one. Uh, this is going to be a big, big time matchup. But I, I do think that if Nick Foles can somehow, some way, lead this team past the Saints, the Saints that. Just, I don't want to say ran the score up because in reality, this is the when the, that last game where the Saints put up 40. That's kind of what Philly was doing to teams last year. I do feel like when they went for it on fourth and like 12, you know, that's that's a little disrespectful. Maybe Doug Pierce will remember that for this game, but in the revenge game for how much were the underdogs yet again? Get out your ski mask, get out your dog mask. If Nick Foles can lead the Philadelphia Eagles back to a NFC Championship game, just imagine. Just a ma- I don't even know what I would have to talk about if somehow, some way, the NFC Championship game was the Philadelphia Eagles against the Dallas Cowboys. But one game at a time, if Nick Foles can get the job done this week, Brian Dawkins might have to step aside as my favorite Philadelphia Eagle ever. So what do you guys think about this game against the Saints? Obviously, it's going to be incredibly difficult for the Philadelphia Eagles. But this, you know, when you say things like that, when I say, I'm not super confident in this game, but I'm taking the Eagles, or or it's going to be super, super tough. Isn't that like what we are saying last year when Philadelphia played their best football, when they were the underdogs, when every single person doubted them? Like, we're just getting eerily similar vibes to what we went through last year for our storybook, movie-style Super Bowl run. So yeah, give me your guys' feedback on this game, and uh, as I said, tomorrow we're going to be doing, I actually think we're going to be, here's how it's going to be going. Friday, we're going to be meeting the defensive special teams players for the replacement. Saturday, there's going to be a rebuild. And on Sunday, before the Eagles game, I'm going to be dropping the offensive starters for the replacements. I don't think we'll start the series, though. It'll just be a meeting the team style. And obviously, we'll have our post-game grades, hopefully celebrating an Eagles victory. So that's kind of how the next couple days will be lining up. Much more heavy on the Madden content. So thank you guys for watching. Give me your feedback on the game. And until next time, it's C4 saying, fly, Eagles, fly, and peace out.